Hello, my fair friends. I'm Ruby Roos. This is Baby Bunny, and welcome to Fairy Fortunes. Today, I'm going to try something very new with the channel. I've been invited to participate in a YouTube video challenge that's being hosted by the YouTube Pagans Facebook group. So I will link any videos that I have seen people make on the 2019 challenge in the description that box down below as they become available. And if you are participating in this challenge or any others on YouTube, please leave your videos in the comments below. So the 2019 YouTube Pagans video challenge is the ABCs of mythology. Hmm. So I, of course, wanted to incorporate a fairy element to that challenge. So today I bring you A is for Arthur. Hmm. Now, there seems to be um, some speculation on what mythology actually is, so I do have notes here. Mm. I'm going to be using notes. So you're just going to have to deal with me looking down at my notes every now and again. But I wanted to make sure that I included some specific definitions. So I took these definitions from the Oxford Dictionary that is available online. And so the first definition that I'm going to give you from the Oxford Dictionary is, of course, the definition of mythology. And it says that mythology is a collection of myths. I really hate that when definitions say, well, it's a collection of things that are the same thing. Okay, that's not quite helpful. So, uh, a mythology is a collection of myths, especially one belonging to a particular religion or cultural tradition. So, that begs the question then, what is a myth? Well, a myth according to the Oxford Dictionary, is a traditional story, especially one concerning the early history of a people explaining a natural or social phenomenon and typically involving supernatural beings or events. So with that said, um, a lot of, there is a lot of doors open to what mythology could actually mean. Now, normally we associate mythology with an old religion that has fallen out of practice. Now, I would say that the YouTube pagans especially would argue that paganism, an alternate religion that is not a monotheist religion, is thriving and active and definitely a living tradition and not something that has been defunct. That's a topic for another video. Um, but generally, people see mythology as being associated with religion. Now, with A is for Arthur, I wanted to broach the idea that the legend of King Arthur could be taken as a mythology, almost a belief so strong that it has become a religion in and of itself. Now I'm going to talk more about Arthur and his connections to the realm of the Fae and to actually various god interpretations. So hang on to your hats with that. Hang on to your bunnies! Hang on to the bunnies! So stay, just bear with me as I get to that. Now what is the difference between a legend and a mythology? Well I have another definition for you from of course Oxford. A legend is a traditional story. There's that same beginning again. Sometimes popularly regarded as historical, but not authenticated. So most people refer to the Arthurian collection of stories as a legend rather than a mythology. But I think those two terms, while not exactly synonymous, a lot of stories, a lot of those traditional stories can traverse into both realms. They can be both a legend and a mythology. So let's dive right into that and talk about King Arthur. So 
in the case of King Arthur, I would like to talk about that idea of a legend with King Arthur. The idea is that King Arthur, there are many, many people be that who believe that Arthur was a living, true king of England that lived in the 1100s or medieval time period. When it comes to King Arthur, there really is no definitive scientific historical documentation that a king named Arthur, who had a sister named Morgan Le Fay, and a teacher named Merlin actually existed, who was a living being that lived in and died in the medieval time period of, of Britain. Now, that doesn't mean to say that he's not true. Something can be true, but doesn't necessarily have to be based in reality. Or rather, rather than reality, a truth has a reality of its own, but there really isn't a definite, tangible explanation for that truth. It just exists. And so I would say that King Arthur is truth. There are stories about him that expand and continue to bring meaning to not just the people of the medieval times that were living in this era, but also, as you can see, by the amount of Arthurian stories that keep coming about in the modern age, that this story of King Arthur is so true that it still speaks to people today. So, and the thing of it is, is with Arthur, there is such this fervor, this belief that King Arthur did live. And not only that, but part of the Arthurian legend is that King Arthur will return again, which now we're getting into more of a myth. Who is this Arthur? Who is this man who has the ability to return from an age past, in death even, to life in our modern age? What kind of man can do that? And I would argue that that is not a man, that is actually a god. So checking over my notes here, when I was researching the Arthurian legend, I came across a fair amount of resources, which I will have linked below, that discussed that the legend of King Arthur became infused with the mythology of an older pagan god. And that god was most known as a being called Arteros or Arteus. Now, these, this god, Arteros, was, fits the definition of a sun god, a god that is a light bringer, that is a god of youth, that takes what was and makes it into something completely new. There is a revolution when a sun god makes an appearance. Another typical mythology concerning a sun god is that sun gods often die and become resurrected. So is Arthur truly a human king or is Arthur something more? Is he a sun god? And you ask people about King Arthur, this is a story that resonates with so many people. And there is this idea that Arthur will return. Or maybe it's not so much that the person they believe lived in the medieval times will return, 
but that idea of him will return, that we will have that kind of revolutionary change that comes about with King Arthur. So with King Arthur, there is that strong connection to a sun god. And I'm going to be honest with you. I started to become disinterested with the King Arthur tale. And that seems so strange to a lot of people because they're like, this story has so much meaning. It's all about revolution and change and you should be supportive of that. And the reason being is that if you'll notice when I'm talking about a god who incarnates as a human, suffers and dies, and then is reborn or comes back to life, is this story having any kind of connection with you? Does this sound maybe familiar to the Western culture here? So King Arthur is very much a figure, a messiah-like figure, in that there's going to be this terrible darkness and King Arthur will rise up and he will save us. And I really fell out of favor with that story because as a member of the Fae, that's it, that concept of having someone else save me doesn't resonate with me because I believe that we all have to be our own light bringers. We all have to be our own institutions of change for ourselves. The only person that can save you is yourself. So that connection with Arthur as a Messiah figure really got me to lose some interest in that, that particular story. However, as I was researching other cultures and their fairy beliefs, I actually came across the Arthurian legend, and it was placed in a different kind of context. And that context was, is that Arthur as a member of the Fae which I felt was really interesting to, to see that connection. I'd never even made that connection. Now, if you think about it, now when we think of the Arthurian legend, the one thing that comes to mind is his arch enemy, his very own sister, Morgan Le Fay. Ooh, the fairy, hmm. So Arthur has a sister who has the mantle, the fairy. So if his sister is a fairy, that would stand to reason that he also is from the other world, the land of the fae. So Arthur has this fairy sister, which stands to reason that he is himself a member of the fairy realm. Now, in older stories of King Arthur, we hear a lot of tales about his companions. Now, in the Arthurian legends is that Arthur had all of these companions that later in later stories became the Knights of the Round Table. But in very old versions of the King Arthur tale, his, fair, his companions had all of these amazing superhuman abilities. Uh, there was one companion that could walk into a town and put every man, woman, and child to sleep just by his will. There was another companion that could outrun any animal on foot. There was another companion that was so light-footed that he, as he walked across the earth, not even a blade of grass would bend underneath his weight. And so here we see in these first stories, these, these very old stories, I should say, of King Arthur, where the knights were these fairy companions, and King Arthur was their king who led them and hunted with them and had these adventures and had this great story that took place. 
And so that was a very interesting thing to me, to consider Arthur as one of my own kind, as someone from the world of the Fae. And that was very interesting to, for me to consider. And the reason that I chose to do A is for Arthur in this first of the ABCs of mythology. Because I definitely, when doing this challenge, I definitely wanted to have that fairy element to the mythology stories that I am going to bring you within this series. So, but going back to what I was saying about falling out of favor with that Arthurian, uh, Arthurian legend, is that originally I really saw the Arthurian myth as this godlike figure, that this was a mythology story, and that King Arthur was an allegory for the unification of Britain. So how King Arthur, how the King Arthur story became, how I viewed this story and saw this mythology is it was a story that represented how Britain had all of these different tribes and then united together. Now how did they unite together? Well they united together largely under the banner of Christianity. Instead of having different gods and different cultures and different practices throughout the land of Britain, they now had one uniting God and a certain set of very strict religious practices. And so I really began to see that Morgan Le Fay represented the old ways that needed to be expelled and removed and destroyed. And so that was why I fell out of favor with that Arthurian legend. But seeing him in this other light as a being of the Fae was a very interesting connection for me. And so I was really curious about if it was, if he did start out as a member of the Fae and then kind of grew into this allegory for the unification of Britain under that banner of Christianity. How, how did that happen? And the other question that I considered was, is unification necessarily a bad thing? And I would say that with the land of Britain, with all of the, that they were able to accomplish after that unification, whether or not it was Christianity that caused them to unify, what they were able to accomplish was quite extensive. Although I would argue that there were certain cultures that were not very happy about what they were able to accomplish, but it remains that they were one of the greatest world powers that ever rose in human history. So how, how did it happen that, that he was this fairy person, he wasn't at odds with his fairy sister, but they were a unified force with Merlin and Morgan Le Fay working together with him, to Morgan Le Fay being at odds with him and him being associated as this Messiah godlike figure. And so as I was doing this research and had this question in my mind, I came across a lot of discussions on this very question. And the idea is, is that mythology is not a stagnant art form. It is not something that is simply written and collected and read verbatim, especially with the Arthurian legend and mythology of Arthur we can see how that legend has grown over time. And it seems to be that with these traditional stories, 
That's the key word there. These traditional stories that have such great truth embedded in them. The current culture then takes these truths, takes these traditions, and embraces them and shapes them, and then these stories take on a new element and a new kind of life within the context of that culture. So there was a time when the Fae were recognized and worshipped, and that was one element of society. And then there was the rise of the monotheist religion, and whether or not we agree with everything that happened in that time period, there is no denying that great change happened in that time period. And so this Arthur, this godlike figure of Arthur, this, this bear king, this sun king, then changed to this resurrected messiah-like figure that is going to constantly come back into the realm of humanity and provide us with change. So some of these stories, like if you look at some of the most recent King Arthur renditions that have become a part of our culture, is that these stories are now exploring things like poverty, disparaging positions of the different classes. These stories are now, ex are now exploring the concept of race and how race and the round table need to be shared. That idea is that every race deserves a place at a round table where no one race is above the other, but they are all equal and united. So I found it fascinating that the Arthurian myth is such a powerful, resonating truth that is still a part of our living and changing culture. So I would really like to know your thoughts on Arthur. Is he myth? Is he legend? Was he real? Is he simply true? I would really love to know what your thoughts are in the comments below. So as always, Bunny and I say, have a fairy full day.